Hi, I'm John Everett with Zern Industries. Today I'd like to talk to you about removing the checks from our large diameter 300 and 400 series valves. This request came through from a customer and amongst the whole Zern organization it's very important to us to listen to the voice of the customer. So this particular request on how to remove the checks was a voice of the customer request and we're going to follow suit and answer their questions for them and we thought hey it's going to be great for the rest of you out there to see this too. You might be incurring the same problem. What happened was a fairly new tester, repair, backflow repair person, was having a little bit of a struggle getting the check out of a 350 AST. Now, there's a certain procedure that you want to follow. Most of it seems like common sense, but quite frankly, there are a couple of things that you have to do where it does make it very difficult. So first, we want to go ahead and shut off our shutoff valves. That'd be the normal thing to do. We've got to close it off so that we don't have any flow going through it or any pressure. Next, we want to open our test cocks as, so as to bleed the pressure out of the valve. Once we get the water drained, pressure out of the valve, we can go ahead and remove our inspection cover. The inspection cover is what allows us to get into where the checks are actually housed. So by removing this cover, now I've exposed the area where the checks are actually housed and I can go ahead and remove them. Now this is the important part of what came up with this young tester. When he took out his retainer for the number one check, he reached inside and grabbed a hold of the check and he was finding that it was very difficult to get out. He couldn't pull it out of its bore. What had happened was, after he had dropped the pressure down within the valve, he had gone ahead and shut off his number two test cock. And what that does is it results in you trying to pull a vacuum. There's, there's no air to come in behind that check and let it freely come out of its bore. So again, when you want to take out any one of the checks, make sure that all of your test cocks are open. That way you're not trying to pull a vacuum when you're removing the checks. So again, I'll go ahead and take that uh, test cock open and we'll go ahead and pull out the number one check. Now they're pretty straightforward. They're just sitting within their bore, about like you see here, and you simply pull on the handle. But one thing that can happen, and it can make them difficult to take out over the course of time, is when we get calcification and basically just minerals from the water plating around that check. It can make it very difficult to remove from its bore. So what you want to do in that case, when you get your retainer removed, if you're struggling getting the check out, we can go ahead and close our test cock again and just slightly open our inlet shutoff valve. And what that will do is give us a little bit of water pressure to help bump that check out of its position. Once it does so, we'll go ahead and shut the water back off and then we can you know, take the check on out of the valve, repair it, do whatever is necessary. Now in the case of our second check valve, we also want to remove our retainers. We have wing clips that hold them into position. There's two of these retainers. And again, we're simply going to grab a hold of the check and pull it out of its respective bore. Now, when this check gets some calcification around it, again, we want to use the same procedure that we did with the number one check, but we're going to do it slightly different. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to add a temporary bypass hose to test cock number one, and we'll run that down to test cock number four. Then we want to just go ahead and open up test cock four and crack our inlet, our number one test cock ball valve. And what that will do is it will supply water pressure to the back side of that second check valve and it will help bump it out of its position. So again, anytime you're removing the checks from any of the 300 series, be it a 350, 375, 450, 475 series, including all the detector assemblies, you want to make sure that your test cocks are open as you remove the check valve. If you're struggling with the check valve due to calcification and minerals holding it into its bore, use a little bit of water pressure to bump those check valves out. I think you'll find that very effective. It'll be very helpful and time-saving for you in the future when you repair a backflow preventer. Thank you for watching. For more information, please subscribe to our One Zern YouTube channel. Call our customer care center at 1-855-1-ZERN and visit us at zern.com.